On October 23rd, 1989, a chemical release occurred at Phillips 66 Chemical Complex in Pasadena, Texas, which resulted in a massive vapor cloud that ignited into a devastating explosion, which registered with the same force as a 3.5 magnitude earthquake and resulted in subsequent explosions and fires. The explosion also resulted in 23 deaths and over 100 injuries. Production at the Phillips plastic plant was halted, and over $400 million in settlements were paid. According to a report from FEMA, the Phillips company needed to be more available to inspection by engineers and safety officers in addition to inspection by local fire departments, who may not be as knowledgeable about the potential hazards. Furthermore, it was noted that the safety valves and connections should be underground as much as possible to minimize damages from the explosion. In this explosion, the sprinkler system was above the ground and cut off by the blast, preventing any immediate control of the following fires. There is a long list of things that went wrong leading up to the disaster. The system shown here consists of a polyethylene reactor with two outlet streams flowing through a ball valve that's outlet is connected to a collection tank. There was a lockout device put on the ball valve to prevent it from opening. A ball valve is open or closed depending on the pressure distribution of the gas flowing through the tubes of the reactor. When a ball valve is open, the pressure changes and causes the ball to rotate 90 degrees so that the gas can flow through it like a pipe. On October 23, 1989, a maintenance team from a company called Fish Engineering needed to do some work on the collection tank. To begin, the ball valve was closed, the lockout device was on, and everything was connected. The first mistake was that a maintenance worker turned off the lockout device for some reason. Then, the collection tank was disconnected for maintenance, and the reactor was disconnected for safety. After a bit, the maintenance workers reconnected the reactor. The two tubes from the reactor had identical connectors onto the valve, so the ill-trained maintenance workers accidentally interchanged the hoses and connected them backwards. When this happened, the ball valve seemed close to the workers because they did not know the tubes were reversed. In reality, the pressure change from the switching of the hoses opened the ball valve. The collection tank was not connected yet, so, 85,000 pounds of flammable ethylene isobutane were released into the air. This valve was situated in a part of the Phillips 66 plant that manufactured plastic at high temperatures, so it did not take long for this gas to find an ignition source and set off a series of deadly explosions. This means there are many things that could have been done to prevent this disaster. Firstly, the supervisors of the Phillips 66 plant should have made sure that all of the workers were adequately trained to ensure the maintenance procedures were done correctly. For instance, they should have modified and enforced their lockout procedures so that no one would have removed the lockout device on the valve actuator in the first place. The use of a blind flange insert should have also been required to block the entrance of the pipe. The collection tank should have been reconnected before the air hoses were reconnected. Speaking of air hoses, the connectors on them should have been designed so that they cannot be interchangeable or connected backwards. Finally, a secondary ball valve should have been installed in the pipe to serve as a backup. If even some of these things were done, the effects of this disaster would have been greatly reduced, maybe even non-existent because the valve would have not been opened and the flammable gas would not have escaped. After the incident, Phillips settled resulting claims in 1992 for over $400 million. OSHA issued a total of 575 willful and serious violations to Phillips and 193 to Fish Engineering. No criminal charges were filed against anyone working for the Phillips company. More recent news of the company involves a malpractice of lawyers of Umphrey Borough Law Firm representing the Phillips Company when settling cases involved with the explosion. According to the New York Times, some plaintiffs said they were warned that Humphrey Borough would not pursue their cases in court. Others said they were also told if they saw other counsel, Humphrey Borough would still be entitled to a third of their compensation under the contingency contract. This law firm was recommended by the Employees Workers Union 
suggesting employees and families were forced to settle for smaller settlement fees and still received about $65 million in contingency fees. This development had a significant impact on the poor business operations of the Phillips company.